Now, Andy, we have a great show today. Olympic gold medalist Christy Yamaguchi's on. Oh, yeah, that's right. And we're also going to talk about making time for romance. Mm. They also have that segment on pregnancy fashions. Yeah. Hey, Forbes, what are you doing? Tie bow? Why, what are you doing? Bow tie. Wow. That's, that's weird. weird. Matheny. And I'm Forbes Riley, and welcome to Essentials. Welcome to Essentials. Wow, Whoa. that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Tai Bo, what we're talking about is this, the newest form of karate aerobics that I've been studying for about six months. It's helped me lose weight and just... And you're going to show us how to do it in the show. And I'm excited that Christy Yamaguchi is going to be here today. I, I, was, I heard earlier that she's going to be talking about fiber fashions. And I thought, so what, people are going to be walking around in oat brand clothing? You know, what is that? <laughs> we also have a great segment on making time for romance. And me and my <laughs> new hubby, we're, we're working on that. You want, I don't know if this is romantic. I, I know you don't know this story. But for our first anniversary, we decided, this may be romantic or not, to go in his Bronco. We cooked a lobster dinner, uh -huh. a big lobster dinner, and sat in the back of his Bronco in the back, had a little picnic, and watched a drive-in movie. Oh, that's great. Is that romantic? Oh. It's so wonderful when you can eat in front of your guy, isn't it? I mean, was, <laughs> was it a big lobster? It was a messy one. You know, when you first date, it's like, oh, I'll just have that raisin. Oh, I'm so full, you know? <laughs> I was thinking about my most romantic moment, and unfortunately, the only thing I could think about was I was dating this guy. We both kept very late hours. I was a waitress. He was a stand-up comic. It sounds like a Bob Dylan song, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a good setup to he me. He was a stand-up comic, and she was a waitress. But anyway, we had, we had to make a late date to play Trivial Pursuit, and we played it all night long, and we learned so much. <laughs> it was just great. That is so romantic. <laughs> and speaking of romance, don't you love our segues? Speaking of romance, one place for a romantic moment might be the shower. Which you don't play Trivial Pursuit in. No, unfortunately. But all the shower products they have on the market can be really confusing. Like when you're standing in the drugstore Oof. with all those choices in front of you, how do you know what to buy? So here to help us make the best decision about all those shower products is award-winning writer in the beauty and health fields for Glamour and the New York Times. <gasps> oh, Please welcome UCLA professor Rebecca James Gadbury. <laughs> Well, we're going to talk about showers today. That's a great subject. I, I like to be so clean. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it clean. Yes. So we're going to start with shampoos. And what we're going to talk about with shampoos is, well, not all shampoos are for all people. Well, Ooh. why is there so much confusion about shampoos and who has what and blah, blah, blah? Well, because everybody's got different types of skin, different types of hair, and the cosmetic industry makes different types for everybody. Because well, when, when you go to the drugstore, you want, there's an entire aisle a uh, product I after know. product. And it's so hard to decide. And all you're looking at basically is pretty packaging because you don't know what's in the product. So when you start out, you might want to start looking for, if you have dry hair and you know you have dry hair, look for a product like a shampoo for dry hair. It'll have moisturizers in it and other things. It'll help to keep your hair shiny. On the other hand, if your hair is oily, look for oil-free products and products that are made to help clean your hair really well of the oil. And a dry hair shampoo won't work on an oily hair and vice versa. They could say for dry hair, but how do you know they really mean it? What's in the product that you should look for? A really good thing is to get a little tiny bottle and try it on your hair so that, because you can't bring it back and get your money back, so just invest about 59 cents and you're okay. They but do, another ingredient. They do, I'm sorry, they do. They have those bins. It's travel yeah, kits. You can great. sample little products. And not That's everybody's got things in there, but they do have them and they're wonderful. And I always try a new shampoo that way. Panthenol is also a wonderful ingredient. When you look inside, well, not inside, even just look on the top or on the on the container and you look on the container it'll say panthenol on a lot of products actually there's one right here it says panthenol right there it says it right okay. right down oh it says right yeah right there panthenol. and it also says on the back of the container where the ingredients are look for panthenol it helps to moisturize your hair from the inside and it helps right. to repair damage but it can work even on oily hair because it doesn't come is that hair. true that shampoos can repair split ends well if it's got 
pantanol in it, some of them do, but the proteins are the things that are shampoo that helps repair split ends. It's only temporary. It builds up on your hair and it can break your hair off at the scalp. So okay. I would suggest staying away from those. I've gotten into really natural products uh -huh. and I've steered away from more commercial products. I'm wondering, are natural products better for your hair? Well, they can be unless you're allergic to things and then natural can actually be more allergy causing than the synthetics are. That's a really good point. And just because it says natural doesn't mean it's completely natural. For instance, we've got some products here that say apple essence or herbal essence or whatever and you think they're natural. Essence means fragrance. It doesn't mean all the ingredients are natural. I always read ingredients and see, you know, ammonium, yeah. laurel, loramide, tetrasodium. So mm -hmm. Even when it says natural, it has all the, the oh, other yes. stuff in it. Oh, yes. And if it says like coconut in parentheses after ammonium lauryl sulfate or sodium lauryl sulfate, only part of it's taken from coconut. The rest can be taken from petroleum. I know this is hard to believe, but I actually color my hair. You do? <laughs> yes. No, and I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I've always had a question about dandruff shampoo. Does it strip color? Not all of them do. As a matter of fact, there's some new ones on the market that aren't traditional dandruff shampoos, and they you can find them because they say cleans flaky scalps and things like that. Also, there's two-in-one shampoos that are really popular now and those shampoos actually leave kind of a slimy feel on your fingers if you want to put your finger in there oh, I'd love to you do the slime okay you're soaking in now it now rub your fingers together <laughs> now you feel that yeah. They coat your hair and they can weigh your hair down. So if you're using a two-in-one shampoo, you may want to use a clarifier. There you go. You may want to use a clarifying shampoo to help take off the residue that coats your hair and with protein shampoos too. Great. Now, I've always had dry kind of frizzy hair, which uh -huh. is a lovely thing to have. And I'm a big proponent of conditioners. Yes. Am I doing good for my hair? For dry, frizzy hair, yes. But a lot of people stay away from conditioners if they have oily or normal hair. And what you can do is don't use conditioners that you use in the shower unless they say oil-free. And they're kind of hard to find. I actually went looking for them yesterday and couldn't find very many. Or you can leave, uh, get a leave-in conditioner where you spray it on your hair when you get out. It's not going to be in the shower, this but is it's going to be kitchen. on your sink. What is right, this why guy do you have vinegar here? I have vinegar there because vinegar is completely oil-free, as you probably know, but it can help bring out highlights in your hair and act as an after-rinse in order to not only bring out highlights, but to make comb out easier. So it's is, an oil-free condition. Is apple cider better than white? I just Yes, I like know, apple cider I've better. I've always heard that, yeah. Yes. I like the smell of it better. <laughs> That's I'm why I like soap it. Here. Now, soaps can leave a scummy film on your body, and when you're washing, that can be really terrible. I don't know if you can see it here, but you can see how scummy the film is on the, uh, in the bowl. Looks delicious. But look at it there. Oh, well, you can see okay. it on the outside. And that scummy film is also going to be in your shower, on your faucets, whatever. And just because it says soap doesn't mean it is soap. Soaps interact with mineral deposits in hard water, which almost all the country is. So you want to stay away from soaps. You want to go towards soap substitutes. And the way that you know them is the ingredient is on the package. They'll be liquids, and they'll also be in bar shape, but they're actually not soap, and they rinse completely completely from your so body. So let, let me get clear about this. Yeah. So you're saying that when they list the ingredients mm -hmm. on the package, you know it's not real soap. Right, because soap doesn't have to list ingredients. It's a little catch in the okay. law. Okay, all right. Now we also have body scrubs that are becoming really popular, mm -hmm. and they're in soap substitutes too. Do you use a body I scrub? Love I scrubs. love them. I, love, I learned that word exfoliate, and I do it a lot. It yes, it's good for you. <laughs> it's very good for you. I'm always wondering though, because I actually get into that mm -hmm. scrubbing, and I'm wondering if I'm doing damage to my skin. Don't scrub for more than a minute total on your face, Oops. and two minutes total on your body. Just kind of scrub, scrub, move to the next place. Okay. How about the difference between soaps and and uh, gels? The the gels are always soap substitutes. They rinse completely. When you look at the bars, it can be either a true soap, which will leave a film, won't have the ingredients though, or it will be um, a soap substitute in bar form. And by the way, a lot of people who have dry skin think that they can clean and moisturize at the same time, but the the soaps that have the oils in them, the cocoa butter or whatever, leave a more residue on your skin than just soap by itself. Okay. I haven't been cleaning very well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of us haven't. I recognize those. These are loofah sponges, and I also brought some pumice, and I brought these new little ones. These are called um, mesh... Uh, Scrunchies. Yeah, well, I forget what they're called. <laughs> but what I look at when I, when I look at these, what I think about is silicone, because these are actually a type of sponge silicone. So is this a sponge? It's a type of a sponge, and it helps to make... Yay, team. Go, go. 
<laughs> it helps to make your lather, I think this one might be, it helps to make your lather lather up a little bit more when you're using one of the foaming cleansers. So when you use these, it's a good thing. They're wonderful, but you might want to wash them out in just your regular cleanser and then also put it in a little bit of alcohol. The problem with these is that they breed bacteria. And when they breed bacteria, as you can see, they've got these little sharp edges on them. They act like needles and can insert the bacteria into your skin. How many people have loofahs in their shower right now? Uh, yeah, these oh. are from my shower. So we should so, get rid of our yeah. loofahs because I they're wouldn't use bacteria them. breeders? That's right, exactly. They can breed bacteria and you don't even know it and they're natural so they breed bacteria better than a synthetic does. These are synthetics. Lastly, we've got something that helps to buff away dead surface cells and a lot of people with oily skin use them. The problem here again is that they breed bacteria and they have the little sharp edges on them to insert So Rebecca, before into we go, skin. to wrap up, we have I just want to, the advice on each one of these products real quick is for shampoo, look for Panthenol because it helps to repair and moisturize from inside and any type of hair can use it. Excellent. Try out a sample. Try out a sample because you don't want to invest a lot of money before you find out if a shampoo is good for you. Okay. Conditioners. So you can condition according to your hair type. Right. right. Condition according to your hair type or go to straight vinegar in your, or use an after conditioner that stays in your hair. And your basic tips, uh, I, I know, are the, the loofah. Get rid of them. Get rid of the loofah. Go towards something synthetic. Stay away from soap. And if you have allergies, use synthetic ingredients. Don't go towards the naturals because they can often cause more allergies. Great stuff. Yeah, okay. Thank you it so much, nice Rebecca. It was wonderful you. meeting you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Well, after a shower, you might want a relaxing cup of tea. <laughs> what kind should you choose? Well, we'll find out that and more when we come back. So this is